What is up guys? Sora is my homeboy here and today I'm doing a slightly different type of video. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, my thoughts on Ruby since season 3 just finished today. Um, for those of you guys who don't watch Ruby, just stop watching this video right now because it's about season 3 and it's going to have like major spoilers for the entire series basically. Um, so if you don't watch it oh, and are planning to, then go watch it before you watch this video. Or if you're not interested at all, then just don't watch this video. Just flat out shut it down right now if you haven't caught up with where Ruby is right now. Just stop the video. Stop it right now. But if you do watch it, then stay and share all your thoughts and you can hear all my predictions and stuff like that. Um, I mostly want to talk about the newest episode that just came out today, like the finale for season three, um, but also just my general thoughts on everything that went down because a lot happened in this season. Um, but basically, uh, it's been a good season. A little bit soul crushing, <laughs> but uh, it was good. Um, I really like kind of the transformation of it. I mean, we knew going into it that it would be much darker than the series has been so far because the opening tells you right, right in the lyrics, the tone, the imagery, like it's all much darker than I think we've had before. So we knew that going into it. Um, but th the beginning was very fun. Like, I love the tournament setup. I love um, seeing the team battles and then the doubles and the singles. Like, I think that was a great idea. Um, and we, then we got to see, like, characters we hadn't met before. Like, we had never really seen Sun's team fight together. We didn't know the other two members. Um, we met some really cool side characters, um, like Flint and Neon. Um, and there were just, like, a lot of really fun moments at the beginning. And I had, like, so much fun watching those first episodes with the tournament battles. Um, really, really awesome and well done. And then we also got to meet Winter and Crow, which was really cool, because they were characters that, like, we had heard talked about or knew they existed, but we hadn't met them yet. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Um, and, th and also finding out that Weiss can summon and that her glyphs are hereditary was a really cool idea. And then, of course, that came into play later um, when she actually learned how to do it. Um, but we got that, too. So we had all kinds of new characters popping up, meeting new people. Um, the cast really expanded in this season. Um, then, we, like, partway through the season, we got the whole, like, Mercury-Yang ordeal that went down um, with the battle between them. That was, like, I think that was the turning point in the season, that cliffhanger. Everyone flipped their shit at that cliffhanger. I did, too. Like, I was going crazy. Um, and, like, that was the point where, like, everything just started going downhill, and everything just started getting crazy and darker and kind of just, like, snowballing all the way until the finale. Like, that's where the pace picked up in this season, and it had it never slowed down from that point on. Um, but that was definitely one of my favorite moments. Like, I, I was angry when it happened, because it was like, oh my gosh, like, the villains are so annoying, someone stop them, because we know what's going on, kind of. We sort of knew bits and pieces. Um, but, yeah, that was, like, a really fun moment, and probably one of the most intense moments in the season, aside from the last couple episodes and all the stuff that happened with them. Um, and then we had uh, some backstory for the villains, sort of. We don't know everything about them, but we kind of got a sense of like what they were doing before we met them. Um, and that was kind of cool. I have a feeling there's a lot more to learn. Um, Emerald seems like sort of a basic, stereotypical um, sidekick or like minion storyline. Um, but Mercury, there's some interesting stuff. Like I think there's a lot more there that we're going to learn. Um, and we don't actually know a lot about Cinder either. Um, we know that she can control Grimm, it seems like, um, and she is obviously after the Maiden's power, but we didn't really see, like, the backstory of where he, uh, she came from. So that might be coming in the future. We just got a little glimpse of it. Um, we also had our ghost become canon, and we, we, I, don't, I don't want to talk about episode 12 yet, but I, for me, the moment when that was canon is when they were sitting together, and she put her head on his shoulder, and I was like, okay, this is canon now, and it's adorable, and I needed this so much. So that was really great. Um, and then, of course, we get, you know, Pyrrha's choice. We find out about the Maidens, and she's going to have to decide if she goes through with it or not. Um, and, yeah, I mean, that was... I don't know what the word for that is. It was it was scary because I knew that it, it wasn't one of those things where she was just going to be like, nope, not going to do that, and then stay the same. Like, we knew she was going to either go through with it or change somehow. Again, I'll get to more of that later. I'm going to stop talking about Pierce stuff now, because I, I'm going to get to that at the end after I've reacted to everything else. Um, but then, of course, we got Penny's death, which was kind of technically the first death in the show, at least that I can think of. Um, and that was... I, had, I don't 
it obviously it was it was really heartbreaking but we also knew it was coming like the the episode before that like we knew what was coming we knew she was going to die but i definitely did not expect it to be as like brutal of a death as it was like i did not expect that at all that was yeah that was heartbreaking um that episode was definitely this is what i mean about like it, it never slowed down like the beginning of the season didn't have moments like that it was kind of just like the battles at the tournament for fun and then the gang thing happened and then penny and then just uh, and then the next episode and it just never slowed down and i'm like still processing all the way back to that episode of like everything that happened um my, uh, poor Penny. My my prediction for her, though, like, I, I don't actually know if they're going to rebuild her or not. I mean, everyone's hoping so. Like, we want her to come back, and she's a robot, so she would be one of the easiest characters to, like, revive, quote-unquote, um, since they can just build her. Um, but my prediction is, if they do actually bring her back, I don't think she's gonna have her memory. Like, I think she's not gonna remember Ruby. She's not gonna remember anything they did. Um, and she will essentially be a new Penny, like, created completely over it doesn't have her memories is my guess as to what's going to happen with that i don't know that for sure but that's my prediction um then okay episode 11 had a lot of stuff in it that i that i wanted to react to and try and get my thoughts out about about um because we know neo's still alive um but torchwick's death was i i honestly i was not happy with his death um it was like really unexpected and really strange like it, it didn't feel like they were leading up to that or like if he was going to die i would have thought it was from like ruby or some battle that went down like i i don't know i was not satisfied with that part but I, he he is dead like there are so many people that are saying like oh he can come back somehow and they wouldn't really kill him off there no guys he got eaten by a grim like it He's not coming back from it. And and frankly, like, there's no reason for him to come back. Like, as much as his death was unexpected for that exact moment, there's... Why would he come back? Like, there's nothing else to do with him in the story. Like, there's not a reason to bring him back as a villain. So, uh, he's not coming back, I don't think. Um, but that part was kind of sad, because Torchic was a really fun villain. Like, he was definitely my favorite villain in the show. Um, and it was sad to see him go so strangely. Like, it, it was kind of just a strange scene, to be honest. Um, but I guess he's gone now. What are you going to do about it? Um, and then we got to see Velvet's weapon in that episode. Finally, we have been waiting so long. And now I, I found that there's a group of people. Some people thought that it was really lame and that we had way too much build up for it to just be a mimic of other people. I don't agree with that at all. Like, just in that scene alone, and this is not just me, like other friends I have who watched it, like as soon as that scene happened, they said, She's my favorite character. <laughs> like, that that alone is enough to, like, bump her into top ten. Like, oh, it, it was it was so cool. It was so well done. The music choice was perfect. I'll get to, I'll get to the music later also because that's also relevant. Um, but it was just, it was so cool. And honestly, it, it really surprised me at first because I know a lot of people had predicted that th that was her power. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it counts as her weapon or her semblance or both, but... Anyway, a lot of people predicted she could mimic others, um, but I like I didn't think of that when I first saw the scythe. So I, my first thought was, she's another scythe wielder. Like, how is this possible? Because they said there were only two. So I was completely thrown off. Um, but then when I realized what was happening, I was like, oh, I see what's happening. This is so cool. Um, and the fact that she used Penny's weapon, that little tribute to Penny was really well done. Like that that part, just like hit me right in the heart. It was really great. Um, so th that scene was like a little bit of a reprieve from all the sadness. Um, so yeah, I, I enjoyed that part a lot. Um, and then of course, White summoned, even though it wasn't the full thing, like I, I had seen that coming too. Like I she was gonna summon the knight at some point. I just didn't know when it was gonna be, but we got to see that, which was super awesome. Um, and I hope she'll actually like summon the whole thing in the future when they battle and stuff. Um, the new Grim types are pretty cool. Um, Griffins are cool. We have a dragon, basically like a smog grim. Um, so yeah, those are pretty cool. Um, when we saw, to be honest, okay, Crow's Scythe got revealed. And when we saw that, it honestly was really underwhelming to me. Like, I, I don't know. I think I don't like the design of it very much. Because, I don't know, there was so much buildup. And we've just been like waiting and waiting to like see this great scythe wielder who taught Ruby. And then it just didn't look as cool as I thought it was going to. 
Um, but then again, okay, I don't like the design of his scythe that much, um, but I'm sure his fighting style is really cool. Like, we didn't actually get to see him fight with his scythe much, because he just killed one Grim and that was it. Um, I'm sure if I saw him actually fight with it more, and probably have a similar style to Ruby's, I would like it more. Um, but I thought that part was a little underwhelming, at least to me. I will say, though, uh, I gained a lot of respect for Ironwood in this season. I did not like him at all in season one and two. Um, but when he came back with, like, his, uh, metal torso revealed, and then he, just, like, the way he used his gun and took out everything, I was like, okay, Ironwood, like, I have a little respect for you now. You're pretty darn cool. So Ironwood definitely went up in my book in this season. Um, and then, oh my gosh, then the Blake and Yang stuff. Adam is creepy as shit. Oh my gosh. I did not expect that at all. Like, I expected him to be, like, dark and brooding or maybe like a little bit cruel but like he is creepy oh my gosh like i didn't i did not expect that at all so we, he needs to go down like i do not like adam at all i thought it would be one of those characters that's like you know he, he's like a villain so you, he's mean and cruel and you're not supposed to like him but like he's kind of cool in a way because like he seems pretty cool like in the trailer like the the slashing he does where like the background goes red and stuff like he seems pretty cool no not anymore. We need to get rid of him. Um, and I definitely did not at all expect what happened with Blake and Yang. That totally caught me off guard. I did not see that coming at all. Um, that definitely, that was the moment or episode where I cried most of anything that's happened in Ruby. I don't think I had cried at Ruby up to that point. Well, oh, I did when Penny died. But, like, in season one and two, I never cried at anything. But that, that moment got me hard. <laughs> it really did. Um, and then the way that episode ended, I thought for sure Ozpin was going to die. I have been predicting since before season three even started that, like, if, if someone was going to die in the show, Ozpin would be one of the number one picks for it. Because it would be sort of like a Dumbledore-ish deal where it's like, you know, headmaster of the school and he goes down, like, symbolically and, like, he's a powerful icon for that. Um, but So I was definitely expecting him to go down. So I was kind of surprised that he didn't. Um, and you could, I mean, you can argue that he might be dead because, like, he's missing and he fought Cinder and we didn't see what happened. But no, if he's missing, he's out there somewhere. They, It would have told us that he was dead if he was dead. Otherwise, that would be, like, the most anticlimactic death ever. If they're going to delay it and then all of a sudden in season four, oh, yep, turned out he was dead. No, they're not going to do that. So Ospin's going to be okay. And oh, I'm so glad we finally got to see him fight because... Ospin is so badass. Like, we knew he was going to be, but actually seeing him fight was so cool. Like, ah, I've been waiting for that moment for so long. For so long. Um, and he definitely has some sort of time powers. Like, we, a lot of people have had predicted that already because he's based on the Wizard of Oz, um, and his, uh, like, clock tower-ish room, like, it has the gears and stuff. Um, so everyone was like, yeah, he probably has something to do with time. And when he's battling, we kind of see that where he has, like, hyper-fast movements, almost like he can either slow down time or speed himself up somehow. Um, so that was super cool. I hope we get to see more of him fighting in the future. Um, it was great that Port and Ublek were alive. Um, I kind of figured they were. There wasn't really a reason for them to die, but now it's confirmed that they survived the Grim battle. Um, then, let's see. Uh, oh, then we get to the scene with Pyrrha and John, And... Uh, Okay, the kiss both melted and broke my heart because they, okay, I was waiting, I was waiting for that for, like, the whole show of, like, then it's, like, super, super officially canon, and it's just so adorable, like, they need to be together, and it was adorable, but you all, you also know what's coming, and you know it's not gonna end well, and so it's also heartbreaking, and, oh, <laughs> I don't even know what else to say about that, it's heartbreaking. And then, uh, I will never see the locker scene the same again. Like, in season one, when Cardin pushes John into the locker, it's funny, and you blast off, and you laugh at it. I will never see that scene the same again. Just saying. Never again. Um, but, okay. Can we just talk about, before we even get to what happens in the battle, can we talk about the Pyrrha Cinder battle, and how much of a badass Pyrrha is? Okay. The Cinder is a maiden. The maidens have magic, they are, like, superhuman in a way. They're stronger than any other pr people in that universe, aside from, like, the wizard guy from the tale. She went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cinder. She she put up a fight, a good fight. She was toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cinder the whole time. She was a badass. And then, okay, and then even when she loses her weapon, and then she starts using the tower to battle her, 
Oh my word, like, that battle, oh my gosh, Kira is so cool, so, so cool. She's so strong, it's ridiculous. Kira is fantastic. Um, and I, I, I'm i gonna get to more Kira stuff at the end of the episode, because that's what I want to talk about the most. Well, not the most in terms of time, because the rest of this episode, the rest of this video will be longer. Um, but just in terms of putting the most thought into it, that's most what I wanted to talk about is Kira. I will say right now... Kira is not dead, guys, okay? Don't, I, I know it hurts, and it broke my heart, like, I, I was crying at that moment, but she's not dead, she's not gone from the series, so if you are heartbroken right now, as probably you are, like, all of us are heartbroken right now, it's okay, I'm going to explain why Kira's not dead, why she will be back, um, but I'll get to that at the end of the video, but don't worry, okay? Our girl's not dead, she's gonna come back. Okay, um, then finding out Ruby was presumably a maiden. That's, that's what I took that moment to be. That was something that we saw coming, and by we, I mean the fan base. If you've been keeping up with the fan base and the theories that have come out around season three as the episodes have been coming out, we knew she was a maiden. Um, back in season one, the very first thing Austin says to her, you have silver eyes. It comes up again in this episode. Um, that, that's relevant, and we've been saying, uh, or people have been saying, speculating all season, that, uh, you know, the eyes have something to do with the maidens, because Cinder, when she only had part of the maiden's power, she always kept that one eye covered with her hair. Um, and then once, you know, once you have the full power, like Amber showed this and Cinder had this once she had the full power, um, there's like a fire around their eyes, um, implying that that's where their power comes from, or that their eyes are linked to that somehow. Um, so people had definitely guessed that she was the maiden, especially since her mom is named Summer. That's a huge hint right there. Um, so yeah, I think Ruby's the Summer Maiden. Um, we... You know, it first caught me off guard um, when it said the dragon was frozen to the tower. Because at first it was like, is she the winter maiden? That would be really strange and odd. Um, but you have to keep in mind that the maidens have all of the elemental powers. Like we saw Cinder use ice crystals, even though she's the fall maiden. Um, Amber used like summer leaves or something like that. Like they all displayed all of the seasons. So it's not specific to um, the season itself. So Ruby could have frozen the dragon even though she's the summer maiden. Um, but I'm guessing that's what it is. It would, it makes sense. Like, her eyes did the same things that Cinder's did and stuff like that. Um, and it also makes sense. If her mom's name was Summer, that heavily implies or could mean that she was the Summer Maiden. And since her mom passed away, her last thought was probably of her child. Like, it, it would make sense to follow that line of thought, um, and for Ruby to get the powers, um, without realizing it. So, I, that's what that means, I'm assuming. Um, as far as the other Maidens, Winter, I mean... We have a character named Winter. I don't know that she's the Winter Maiden. She could be. Her name would allude to that. Um, she feels like a red herring if she's not, to name a character Winter but have someone else be the Winter Maiden. Um, so that's a possibility, but obviously not confirmed. And I have no idea who Spring could be. I don't even have a semblance of a guess, pun intended, <laughs> for the sake of being. I don't have a semblance of a guess um, as to who it could be, no one is named Spring, or any name that means Spring, as far as I know, um, so it, it could really be anyone, it could even be a character we haven't met yet, maybe she's just not on the scene, I don't know, um, but we don't know who that is yet, um, okay, then we get, oh yeah, and, uh, we finally see their dad, Ruby's and Yang's dad, which, I mean, it's not that big a deal, <laughs> we get to see him, yay, I don't know, I don't think I'll like him very much, he just, like, gives off vibes that I don't like, but I don't know, I'm not going to judge him yet, because we, we don't really get to know him, but um, then we have the really, really, really symbolic moment of fall turning into winter during the episode. You, you see outside Yang's window the um, fall leaf, like the last leaf falling off the tree and landing on the ground, and then it's winter when Ruby goes outside. Um, but yeah, Yang's pretty heartbroken at this point. Um, I kind of expected that, to be honest, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a second, because that goes along with my predictions for what everyone's going to be doing in season four. Um, but yeah, we, so we have the symbolism of the leaf falling. Um, then we have the villain revealed, like the, the main big villain at the end of the episode. Um, I believe her name is Salem. That's what it said in the credits. Um, and she is a grim human. I don't, everyone, that's what everyone's saying is like she's part human, part grim. I don't really know what she's supposed to be or, or how she ties into this, but we knew that there was a higher power. Um, because Cinder seemed to be working for someone else, and at the end of the previous episode, episode 11, she tells Ozpin, um, oh, what is the exact line? It's like, she knew you were arrogant or something? Like, she implying someone else that they were talking about? 
Um, so we knew that there was a higher power, but now we actually see who it is, um, which is kind of scary. Um, and then if, if you didn't watch to the end of the credits, then you missed out because after episode 12's credits, there's a little thing after the credits where Crow turns into a crow, like the bird, like he's actually a crow. So now I don't know if that's his semblance, I'm assuming, because I don't know what else it would be. Um, but that's really interesting. Um, and then my brother and I were talking about, like, does that mean Raven can turn into a raven? But that wouldn't make sense because she already has those, like, red portal things. So how would she have two semblances? Unless it's not a semblance and they are, like, superhuman or, like, have some other power that other people don't. So we don't really know what's up with that. Um, but Crow is actually literally a crow, <laughs> apparently. Um, so uh, there's a lot that went down in the season. A lot of just things going on for the next season. So basically, what next season is looking like, it's going to be very different than what we've had so far, because obviously, the school theme is out the window. There, <laughs> There is no more school. Beacon is destroyed, um, and everyone's very separated. Like, the characters have kind of fallen apart from each other. So obviously, Ruby, Ruby is with um, the rest of Team Juniper, John, Nora, and Ren. Um, and I'm guessing that they're going after Cinder. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that's what they're going to be doing. Um, that group of people. And th that's a really cool group. Like, I really love that mix of characters. Um, we don't know much about Ren and Nora yet, so this is a great opportunity to have either backstory or, like, learn more about them um, as characters. And I feel like John is definitely going to step up to be a leader figure, um, because that's kind of his, like, trope or the arc that he's on is, you know, huh, that that pun was unintentional arc. Um, but yes, the arc that he's on um, in terms of story is like kind of the cowardly or like wimpy person who doesn't know how to do much at the beginning and then becomes this like badass and the strong leader for the rest of the characters um so i i feel like that's kind of the character that he is so i'm excited to see where he goes in the next season um i have no idea what's going to happen with weiss because she's all alone by herself now with no way to really get away from her dad except maybe to run away um but her story could really go anywhere i'm not sure what she's going to try to do um blake is gone now, okay, I wanted to address Blake because I saw a lot of people really upset that she ran away again and that, you know, I heard someone say, like, she hasn't grown at all since season one and why would she do that and stuff like this. Okay, the thing is, she she has changed a lot. And the thing is, okay, in season one, she was running away from, you know, just, like, conflict and running away from things she was scared of. She's running toward the danger now, Okay. It, it, to Yang and the others, it probably feels like she's running away. Um, and and part of it is she's so ashamed of what happened. Like she almost got Yang killed. Like of course she would feel horrible and not want to have to face her. Um, but she's running towards the danger. It shows her back in Veil vale after everything's destroyed, presumably going after Adam. I, I I'm assuming she's going after Adam in the next season, and that's why she's there. So she's running to make things right now. She's not running away. So that's how I view Blake. Um, Yang is definitely. Um, at her her breaking point where they're going to start rebuilding her. She, I feel like it's one of those characters... I mean, you kind of do this with every character, but she's one of those where it's like, you start them out and then you break them down and break them down and break them down, and then you start rebuilding them from there, and they become a stronger and more fleshed out character from that. Um, so I feel like that's what they're doing with her, and she's kind of at her low point right now. Um, I don't think her arm will be too much of an issue. Like, it sucks for her right now, um, but this is a world where they build robots, and people have prosthetic legs and people have metal torsos like it's not that hard to get her a fake arm um some people were saying they probably can't afford one if you have to pay for it i don't really know how one goes about getting fake limbs um but this is a world where it's very very possible to replace limbs um so i don't think that should matter too much um unless it takes her a while to get one i don't know um so there's that she's probably going after raven is my guess there, there's gonna be something with raven in the next season um, and Crow might possibly travel with her. Um, I know he's probably looking for Ozpin or something like that, um, but he did say he could help Yang find Raven um, in this season. He said that. So I'm, she's probably going after Raven, and Crow might, you know, tag along or show up at various points or things like that. Um, I think, okay, this is a prediction I've been making since, like, the beginning of season two. Emerald is going to turn. Emerald is not evil. She is very loyal to Cinder and feels like she can't really leave and Cinder kind of gives her purpose like gives her something to do um but she she's not evil like Cinder is or like Mercury is 
Um, she and we even saw I think it was episode ten of season three. Um, when she's watching the Grim attack the city, she notes like this is actually kind of sad, showing that she does feel some remorse or at least is kind of double guessing what Cinder's doing. Um, and I'm not saying that she's gonna be like, oh, th this is wrong, and I'm gonna go, you know, join Ruby and the heroes, and I'm gonna fight you, Cinder. Um, I don't know that she's necessarily gonna do that, um, but I could see her, like, running away or hiding from Cinder, or at least not agreeing with what they're doing anymore. Um, so I, I, I definitely see that, and I've been saying that for a long, long, long time. Emerald's not evil. I, I really think she's not. Um, so we'll see how that pans out. Um, it's really interesting that we didn't see Emerald and Mercury at all um, at the end of the season. So I, I'm not sure where they are right now or what they're going to be doing. Um, but uh, I don't. The other thing I was wondering about is like Mercury and Cinder might. I mean, since they're not the main villains, since we know there's like a higher villain now, um, they might go down before the end of the show. Um, I believe the show goes out to seven seasons or nine. I'm not sure because I know they said Monty planned out seven seasons, but I didn't know if that meant seven after more after he passed away, or just seven total. But either way, we've still got a ways to go, um, and I could definitely see them going down maybe season five or six, like a little bit before the end, and then having the main villain. But, I mean, that's really far out speculation, and it doesn't really matter at this point. It was just something I was uh, thinking about. Okay, I'm going to get to the pure stuff, um, but right before I do that, I did want to bring up um, Bumblebee, the Blake-Yang pairing, because I honestly, truly believe um, that that could be canon in the future of the show. So if you look, I and I didn't even, I didn't pay much attention to that pairing before. I didn't even really consider it as an option until um, episode 11, where all the stuff happened with them. Um, but they actually have been support for each other throughout a lot of shit in their lives and throughout the, um, the entirety of the show so far. Um, they've really been supporting each other and they've really grown a lot in their friendship. Um, and I, I noted, like, the the part that, um, Ad, the thing that Adam says during episode 11, he says, I will make it my mission to destroy everything you love, starting with her. And of course, of course, of course, I know that doesn't mean romantic. He was just saying, like, everyone you care about. But it at least acknowledges, like, it, the show acknowledges um, that they care very much for each other. Adam knows that they care for each other. Um, and then, I don't know, just like, I don't know. The way, the way it's panning out, it just feels like it's going in that direction. And especially with um, Blake holding her hand as they, you know, are lying together to be taken away on the ship. Of, of course, it, it can mean friendship, and I understand that. And I'm not saying, oh, it's canon now. They're definitely going to be together soon. Like, I'm saying the way that they've been writing the show opens up the opportunity to do that in the future if they would like to. So... My prediction is Bumblebee could become canon. I'm not saying it's confirmed. I'm not saying it's canon right now. I'm just saying um, I, I kind of missed out on that and didn't pay enough attention to it. Um, but there is a lot suggesting that they actually could be appearing later on. Um, so I just thought that that was kind of interesting. Um, okay, finally, the Pyrrha stuff. Okay, so this episode broke my heart and I cried, but it actually wasn't as emotional for me as episode 11 because I know that she's not dead. So the thing is, okay, Pira, let's look at who she's based on because all of them are inspired by historical figures, or not historical figures, but, um, well, some of them are, or like characters from stories and fairy tales. They're all based on something. Okay, so Pira comes from Achilles. Achilles, for those who don't know, um, is a mythological figure from Greek mythology, um, and he like his story, there there are a lot of different versions of it, but the most popular way his story is told um, is that he's an invincible man, the same way that Pyrrha is called the invincible girl, um, who is essentially immortal and unbeatable, like no one can beat him, except for one tiny weakness, which is his heel, which is when, if you ever hear the term Achilles heel, it's like your one weakness is the only spot he can be hurt. And so he, in his myth, dies or is taken down by being shot in the heel with an arrow in the exact same way that it went down in episode 12. So that right there, like, it's just, it's such an allusion to it. Um, and if you look at his name, so the name Achilles um, comes from Greek, obviously, and it basically means people of grief or the grief of the people. Um, so grief is tied in there, obviously. Um, but Pyrrha's name itself, her last name Nikos, means victory of the people. So it's like a grief-filled victory in a way. And there's a term called a Pyrrhic victory, 
like it's the exact same root word as her first name. Um, a Pyrrhic victory is a victory, it's, it's a tactical victory where the, the cost or what you lose from winning almost makes it a defeat. It's, it's kind of like an empty victory, like you technically are the victor, but you lost so much in the process that it could look like a defeat. Now, okay, let's look at that in the context of what happened. So, Pyrrha's fall, pun intended again, Pyrrha's fall is a Pyrrhic victory. It, it looks like a defeat, and it seems like we've lost her, but it's a victory in the end, and she knows this, she knows this. Okay, if we look at what happened, so when she is, like, after she's been shot in the, the heel, but not actually, like, shot shot yet, she looks right into Cinder's eyes, and she says, do you believe in destiny? Now, she, she, that, she knows, like, she knows she's not a goner, because at that point, if you were afraid you were going to die, or you didn't want this to happen, like, she could have gotten away. Not necessarily gotten away, but she could have done something, tried to defend herself, tried to move. Like, I know she was injured, but you would have put up more resistance if you were actually that worried. She just sits there and takes it. She knows what's going to happen. She says, do you believe in destiny? Suggesting that she knows her destiny is more than this. There's something else. Not enough to convince you? Okay, that's fine. That's just one line. But if we look at the previous episode where Amber gets shot in the exact same place, she dies like a normal person. Like, Amber gets shot. We see the, like, power, like, the orange dust stuff go into Cinder and get the fall powers. And then Amber's body just stays in the pod dead for the rest of the scene. Pyrrha's body did not, she did not t die a normal death. Okay, when Pyrrha gets shot, she, like, disintegrates into orange flecks. She kind of just, like, dematerializes almost. Um, some people were saying it's like teleportation and she's gone. I don't think it is. Um, but it, it's not a normal death. Her body did not stay there, so it's something else is going on. And, okay, so we looked at things that mattered way back in Season 1. Um, someone at RTX this year like said, everything in Ruby is for a reason. So even in Season 1, when, we, when he said, you have silver eyes, that's still relevant now. Like There was a reason for saying it way back then, leading into things. There's also another really relevant quote in season one um, that goes along with Pyrrha. This is when she's at, um, she's with Jean in the woods, and she's telling him about Aura since he doesn't know what it is. Um, and as she's like unlocking his power, this is what she says. I have the quote right here. She says, For it is in passing that we achieve immortality. Now wait, I'm going to stop right there. It is in passing that we achieve immortality. Passing, uh, implying passing on, dying, that we achieve immortality. Through this, we become a paragon of virtue and glory to rise above all. A paragon being like a role model. Through this path, we become a paragon of virtue and glory. Infinite in distance and unbound by death, I release your soul and by my shoulder protect thee. Now, unbound by death is a key line there. Okay, so this whole thing revolves around dying and immortality and being unbound by death implies that, like, it frees her in a way. It's, it's not like a normal death. Like, it's, it frees her somehow. I, I don't know exactly what she's going to become, um, but, it, like, infinite in distance implies, like, it, it's not going to be a, a literal resurrection, guys. Like, it's not going to be, like, Pierre comes back in her human body, and she acts like, just like she did at the beginning of the show. Like, no, like, she's going to change. Like, we knew Pierre was going to change, and she wasn't going to be herself anymore. Um, but she's unbound by death, and her referencing immortality, and then having this happen, she's not gone from this world. Especially since, like, there's a lot of unfinished stuff with her character that they still have to do. She is definitely still going to play a role. Um, like, honestly, I, I can't think of any other analogy. Like, the best way I can think of to describe it is, like, um, an Obi-Wan type thing. Like, she's not physically going to be present, but she still has a lot of influence over what happens, and she's still a presence within the universe. Like, that, that's what it seems to imply to me. She didn't die a normal death. She, like, disintegrated into something else. Um, do you believe in destiny? That line just so much speaks to, like, something else. Like, she, she talked in the season, um, the episode called Destiny, about, like, she always felt like she was meant for something greater, and she felt like she was meant to protect the world. It, she, she's not gone. I'm telling you, she's not. She, <laughs> she's really not. She, her death was not like a normal person. This is relevant because this line made no sense until this episode. Like, guys, I've watched Ruby through, like, through everything that we have so far seven times now. 
I've watched the scene seven times, and every time I get to those lines, I have no clue what it means. It makes no sense until I got to this episode, and looking back on it, it makes sense now for her to say this. It isn't passing me to immortality. So I'm telling you, she's not gone. I don't know how they're going to still involve her or what that's going to look like, but Pyrrha's not gone, okay? She, she's really not. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention quickly was um, the song, I May Fall. Okay, we have that reference to fall again. Um, this played during episode 11, and the lyrics fit so well with season 3, and especially with episode 12. Um, like, I, I'm not going to read all of the lyrics, but if you look at them, it's talking about... Um, like darkness winning and we're gonna have to look death in the face and I may fall but not like this not by your hand um I didn't I again I'm not gonna read the whole thing but if you go read through the lyrics to I may fall they fit so perfectly with what happened at the end of season three um so again it's really sad but she's not gone and it's gonna be a, a lot more of like a broken hopeless season going forward than the rest of the show was or at least that season one and two were um but but there is some hope, okay? It's it's gonna be okay. I, I gotta keep telling myself that. Um but yeah, I, I really, really honestly believe here is not gone. It it just it wouldn't make sense, honestly. There's still too much to do with her. It would be a really unjust death for her to go down like that with so much unfinished and so much they could still do with her and what they have been doing her with her. Like we just found out about the maidens this season and for her to like be presented with that choice and then actually like die and not have it be relevant to her, it just I don't know. It just doesn't make sense for her to go down there. So, I know this is like pretty long-winded, and I there was a lot to talk about for season three. Um, but those are my thoughts so far. Here is not gone. Yang is gonna have issues. Uh, everyone's gonna have like issues they're dealing with. Um, and a lot of like character development and change going on. Um, but it's really cool to see where the show has gone, and I definitely like the darker tone. Like again, it's heartbreaking and soul crushing. Um, but we knew the show was going there, and it makes the characters a lot richer um, to, to take the show to that place. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed Season 3. I, I definitely did. Again, it was, like, really emotional, um, but definitely, like, really good for the show overall. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave your own thoughts below, what, um, your own speculations, predictions, arguments for what I said. Like, if you don't agree with me, if you think Peter's dead, or you think anything I said is incorrect and or not going to happen, feel free to say so. Like, I would love to, like, get discussion going and actually see other sides and know what people think, um, because it helps me think about stuff, too. So, if you guys enjoyed, thanks for watching, and, uh, I hope you can find something to do until season four comes out, because <laughs> I'm not going to know what to do with my life. <laughs> but see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.